I wish I had a song about Princess Leia. She's the crack shot of the IP. She's like super awesome and super cool and she never misses the stormtroopers. Cause she's a player. Player. There you go. Good morning, good afternoon, good noon, good evening, good noon, good, good, good evening. I don't know. It's cold out. It's snowing. It's snowing, here. baby. It's snowing here in Seattle. It's crazy. Welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live, where we do it live, and I don't get a second shot to do it the first time. Because it's the first time every time. And you just roll the punches. Today we're paying up uh, Leia from the, I'm gonna, what's the name of the box? Ichiwama box, I believe is the, I think it's that, that one, right? Um, I can never remember the names of stuff because we named stuff late, um, which we talked about yesterday. It was really fun. So we're going to paint up uh, Leia. I think I'm going to keep it pretty canonical with some camouflage and stuff like that. I don't think I'm going to do anything weird like red Sith forest Leia. Seems a little, I don't know. I think I need to have some conversion work on that. Oh, Night Sister Leia. Ooh. Scary. I'm too scared. Imagine if, imagine if Leia had the power of a Night Sister, though. Unstoopable. Totes unstoopable. Wild. Be nice to see some camels. See, that's what they're saying. They're, uh, they, they're in. They're in for it. They're in for the. They're in for it. All right. Are you ready, Ann? Let's I was it. born ready. Oh. It's Space Mom. Spass Mom. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to base coat the flesh tone. And I just grabbed a random flesh tone. Something that I mixed up at home. Nice and peachy color. Yeah, I really like this miniature. Um... It's a lot of fun, uh, you know, Shatterpoint has a unique style and it's it's been a lot of fun to interpret uh, characters into that miniature style and the Shatterpoint style, so a lot of fun. I really like this miniature. Nice, elegant, simplistic design. You know, you don't you don't always need 18 bobbles and doodads and things all over a miniature to make it visually interesting. I personally am a big fan of making sure the painter has room to breathe. She wear gloves. I can't remember if she wears gloves in this. I believe so. I mean, we could just have her. She can just I'll have I'll look gloves. it up, but. She can just have. Oh, she's not wearing gloves. She's not? Nah. Well, there's not a line there, so. Oh, well, then no. I know that the outfit that she wears underneath this poncho definitely has moments where she has on gloves. But this doesn't have to be one of them. This is this moment in time. That's the beauty of Shatterpoint. It was in the box the prop team found. Was it in the box the prop team? Oh. Space mom, space mom. She's a space bomb. Space Mom and Space Thrawn. Tactical Stump, let's go. You have yet to see our ultimate form of tactical things. Can I ask you a question, Dallas? Oh, I love this question. I don't know what question <laughs> you're asking me. <laughs> um, so when it comes to, as we, as we branch out, right, from the core set and 
uh, some of our first expansions, and we get, you know, moments that are, let's say, on Endor in this case, right? Like this, this Leia is pulled from Endor, um, mm -hmm. and we have things like a stump. What are your recommendations for the way people can think about customizing bases to feel like they are of that moment? Oh, so I, I, I just try to tie like, like for me, a miniatures game, um, like Shatterpoint is kind of set in Shatterpoint, um, but like lots of, and so like, I, that's how I think about it. It's like, they're, they're all in Shatterpoint world. And so I try to match the bases. Like, so even though the characters, um, might, for me, this is this is how I treat my army. Um, so like I'm just like, yeah, this is this is my Leia on with indoor costume, but she's on Shatterpoint, right? Um, but that's how I think about it. Um, but like lots of miniature games have, you know, you you do the bases and like, you know, you might do lava bases for your army. And I might do ice bases for our, my army. And then we go to a tournament or just a just a game at the local game store where we want to play each other and you know have some you know warm pretzels and a you know a frosty beverage. Oddly just, specific. Just just you know just playing a narrative game, just a fun game at the local game yeah. store. And it might be on a desert planet, right? The only sure. board, the only table opens desert planet. But I got my lava bases and you got you got your ice bases. It doesn't matter because my army tells the story. Yeah. So like if you if you if you want it to be indoor theme like i'm a huge fan of like let's say let's say i'm building a squad and like i want to use this leia but i have a very specific strike force and i theme the strike force to be um the indoor right yeah. so 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 i build my strike force but then also i also want to use this leia for this is the this, this is the madness of of a miniature gamer right here. Mm -hmm. This is this is a forty year veteran of miniature gaming. But if I'm like I have this other strike force that needs this Leia, I'll just get another Leia and base her different. Cause I'm a, cause that's how you do it. Yeah. Like you theme it. You know mm -hmm. I have a I have an Asajj Ventress that I need to paint for my Night Sisters because my current Asajj is Asajj. Yeah. But like I'm like well I need a Asajj that's like that's never left red. the Night Sisters. Yeah. That's cool. Right? She's wearing a hood. She's wearing red. Right? Yeah. And I want to theme come it to... Come in my office and see some of the art I got in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <that>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel that. Um, and it, it does look like... I mean, this, this is just the example I'm looking at right now because it's what you're painting. But either way, you know, you are customizing every base with, like, little bits of texture and things like that. Um, yeah. It kind of gives everything its own its own vibe, which I love. I so. gave yeah, I gave a little texture paste to to this base and then because that same texture paste is found on many of my bases and so it helps tie them together. Yeah. So definitely softens the like transition, right, from whatever is placed on the base that's attached to the individual miniature. Yeah, and I think that that's super important is like is like that that space where the where the tactical um, you know element which there's a lot there's a lot of different reasons we do tactical elements I can't get into all of them mm -hmm. um, but there's always a reason for for that um, sometimes uh, yes and uh, you want I use a little pumice a little basing gel a little texture gel what that does is it softens that transition between the the element and the base mm -hmm. to create that transition better. And you can do that with like a lot of different things. Like I personally use because um, it's just what I have right now. It's just like a huge thing of sand. Yeah. And then I just prime over it. Then you can paint it however you want. Yeah, sand works. Um, you know, snow, a little snow flock. You can use baking soda mixed with glue uh, to create snow effects. Um, that uh, that can yellow over time, just a warning if you do that. Um, but I do know a lot of people do that trick. 
um, but just any little, there's so many ways to, to add like that little personal element to a miniature and make it your own and to tell your little story. Cause that's what we want. We want you to tell your story, right? The fun of miniatures is you get to tell your story. You get to put your stamp, your moment into the game and get on a table and tell a story with a friend, your opponent, right? Your partner, whoever, and have those moments where you get to tell that story and later on you can be like, oh, you remember that time? You remember that time uh, Vader was standing on that, on, that, on that piece of terrain and I decided to jump down and I needed to like do uh, three successes to get the push and then I would have pushed you off, but but you didn't. I didn't push, and then you like counter back, and like, like though that's what you that's that's what you get to do. It, what you know, you know. I like playing Go, but I don't get to tell the same kind of story playing Go. You want an inverse on the on them? Yeah, that's a good idea. Just adding a little element. And like honestly, I'm a big firm believer in all bases are blank bases. You can cover all these bases with just the the tr traditional fan of um or traditional like basing elements, right? It's like you can just throw different basing elements right over top of the sculpted elements. It doesn't matter. It, I've, I've totally covered shatter point bases with stuff. Um, it, it's, it's totally fine. Totally works. Shatter point is emergent narrative engine with incidentally die. Yes, that's. That's miniature games. That's miniature games. Side real secrets. They are narrative engines. They are emergent narrative engines. You, like, it's it's like um, what well, they're they're really on me in these past two days where I just want to stop painting <laughs> and like talk. Like I know. Um, like, like when a character like like say a character is running across the running across like when you're moving the character and they stop moving out in the middle open. They're not standing there, and right? They don't just walk out there and just be like, well, that's as far as I can move, so I'm gonna stop, and walk around, look around, and see what everybody else has done. Like, they're not doing that. Like, the, the next action, to me, determines what the previous action truly was, right? So if, if, I, move, uh, if I move Wicket out into the middle of the open, and the next turn I continue moving him, he has continued moving. He like if you were to draw that in like comic panel format, he ran across the battlefield, juking and jiving and dodging, wheeling and dealing, probably squealing. Who knows? Um, like it's the it's the entirety of all actions combined determines the individual actions. That's an emergent narrative engine, and that's one hundred percent correct. Like. You, you, the, the miniature doesn't stop and stand around. They're, they're constantly in motion. Um, mini role-playing games, like a, a, a turn is six seconds, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, to me, most miniature games, uh, a character activation is approximately about the same. It's about six seconds, right? Or, or probably even less, really. So you're talking about very minimal time where a character moves from one spot to another, and if they're out in the open, and then they continue moving on the next turn, they've taken, say, 12 seconds. I think six seconds is actually too long in miniatures combat game. But like, that is a continuation of that movement. They have constantly been moving across the battlefield. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's the arc. It's not walk, pause, walk. It's, it's uh, side real secrets. Find me at Adepticon. Really high, doing it to I'm him. Gonna high, I'm going to high five you.
Like, I, that's my favorite part, is like, I, the whole story has to play out for you to understand what all the actions were. Like, think about all the actions like a comic book or a, a movie, um, uh, what's that, um, storyboard, right? You know, especially like the games we make, we don't make, um, we're not making uh, tactical simulation games here at AMG. Um, so it really, it really, that's like what we're thinking about. We're thinking about those overarching full actions and acts and how they all fit together to tell a single narrative uh, storyline. And that's what matters, right? Uh, please bring them to Europe. <laughs> I'll do my best. I'm not in charge of that. Um, it's not even about the Ark of Wicket. It's about the story you tell afterward about the Ark of Wicket and the story it creates in the minds of players. Yes! Tell the story! Ah. It's so... It's, it's the unique defining property of miniature combat games is these narrative stories that you get to bring to life um well i mean not even like that it's like it's the it's the um you know well it is that but i'm but also the the uniqueness of being able to paint the game pieces right um i've told a story before how you know i've 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 been interested in many arts and wanting to do something artistically and I had, of course, done, you know, model kits in the past, like airplanes and cars and stuff like that. But when I found miniatures, I found out I get to play a game with the toys and the art that I make, like, blows my mind. Like, wow, what a, what a concept. And it was such a unique thing that, that no other hobby gives you, right? It's, it's such a fascinating thing to me that this this little hobby of you know putting a little paint on this little Leia like this is an endeavor for myself right where I get to go in here and I get to express myself and I get to tell my story and and my take on Leia and I get to I get to uh, paint it but then I get to share that story the, the paint job with my opponent when I show up and I'm like look when I painted Leia and they're like oh look at that crazy cool paint job you did but then you get to continue that on that story with the narrative gameplay, the emergent game narrative that comes out of the gameplay uh, that continues on and on and on. Um, and we always really, the really cool, over dramatic, ridiculous like moments when you fail and less the times you succeed. Um, I, I personally love it when, when I got the, all the odds against, against me moments. And I'm like, if I can just roll this ridiculous result, it's gonna be epic. And then I fail, and I'm like, no! And then my opponent's like, ha ha, your attack failed against me. Now I shall counter. And you're like, no! And they're like, roll dice, and they're like, hot dice! Ba -ba -ba -ba. And then you're like, blown out. I had one too many coffees today, Ann. No, I got it. I got it. Well, my, my favorite thing is before my role-playing games on Sunday, my friends uh, that play Shatterpoint tell me the stories that sort of played out on their table. And that's the most exciting thing, at least, for me. That's what I love. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rex, take a focus. Name Rose, full tree. Narratively, he took he took cover, got ready, and shot Greaves backing up before combat roll. And yeah, awesome. That's that storytelling. Um, I love the I love the narrative of taking cover of hunker. Um, like to me, it's very much a video game reference. It's snap to cover, right? It's it's choosing to be in cover. So you're like snapping to cover. You're actively choosing to defend. 
um, instead of like willy nilly hell's bells in across the battlefield. Um, unfortunately, now and then you meet a player who couldn't care less if you play with wooden bricks and only for pumping out pedophile. I, um, those, well, I play against those people and I still play ridiculously and, uh, still play, uh, crazy narrative games and, you know, that's just what you get. That's just what you get. <laughs> You're playing with me. You're playing on my terms. Yeah, uh, side reel. I think I think all of our games are are very much that that sort of format. Like, you know, MCP is a storytelling narrative system that gets played out and told over the course of the game. You know, I still have games where we still talk about those and in in great reverence of these crazy moments that happen and we're like, you know. You have experience your tips with the Vallejo texture paints. Uh I use the the putty pumice stuff quite often. I just I just glop it on an old paintbrush and then I wash it away with wash it off the paintbrush with uh, warm water. Um, I just glop it on. Uh, don't let don't let it get up on boots because then it looks like they're sinking in the mud. Um, there's, there's not really much to it. Like you just kind of glop it on there and paint the texture. I, I really like texture paints, pumice gels, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. It's a very easy, convenient way to produce loads of visual interest and texture, especially when you combine it with other techniques. Um, you know, I really like a little pumice and then you throw a little, um, a little ballast on there to kind of create like a, a secondary, uh, level of texture. So you're not just doing one level of texture. Yeah, playing narrative and narrating yourself and your actions inspires your punt inspires your punt to play more narratively. That's 100% true. 100% true. <clears throat> the Vallejo texture paints are I will tell you, I have a friend and he comes over and he brings this like beautiful table of uh uh and and anytime like like if I'm moving like like say I'm playing Legion and I'm moving a vehicle, my vehicle makes tank noise. Like, I'm like, oh, this occupier, it's gonna activate. It's gonna fire. Yeah, is that I, what he yeah, does? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do. I love my, that. My B1s are always like, Roger, Roger. If you're not shouting, Roger, Roger. Are you even playing? Yeah, what are you even doing? I mean, that's kind of, to my uh, experience, like one of the best things about the way that abilities are named and things like that, just from my experience of play, right, is that it really puts you in that mindset because so many of them are quotes or moments that we all, you know, know and love that exemplify yeah. the character at that moment. There's so much thought and time put into those names. And arguments. Like, that's the fun of it is, you know, get in there and yell Roger, Roger. Like, that's the fun of it.
Yeah, I like third elevation a lot. My uh, my game, my Shatterpoint table, um, which I showed off in the Shatterpoint Facebook group, if you haven't seen it, um, I load my table with terrain. Um, I love tons and tons and tons of terrain. And definitely have, we did that one stream where I converted and showed how I did a, a third layer. Yeah, indoor huts would be really cool to do. Um, you know, you could do some indoor huts, super awesome. Um, with like little wooden gantries connecting and pathways, you know. I'm not saying you should have like a big pot over a fire, but do a big pot over a fire kind of piece of terrain. We know, we know. Uh, for the camel cook, we just free. I'm free ending right now. I'm just making it up. I took a little brown and green and did like a little glaze. And while it was wet, I just started slapping on some yellow spots and now some like bright green spots. So we're just we're just making it up. We're just we're paint with our heart, paint with jazz. We're just thinking about. You know, making sure. So one thing that humans love to do is. This is gonna be this is gonna be a wild take. Are you ready? One thing humans love to do is create um, patterns. We love finding patterns and looking for patterns, even when there are no patterns. Um, and it's actually very difficult for us to not create patterns. Um, so I am trying to be very mindful of making sure I do not create a pattern and just sort of let the brush dance around and be mindful that we do not want a pattern. We're gonna use that second brush to sponge away stuff on the edges. So a lot of times, like uh, when you see paint, painters paint, if you watch uh, painters paint on YouTube or Twitch or something and they're teaching, they talk about the bathtub rings and how you don't want them. Um, this is a moment where I actually do want them. Like I want to use the bathtub ring to create a more dynamic and interesting um, um, camo element. because that irregularness becomes part of the camo. Also not making camo feel too small or too big. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a fine line in miniatures because everything in miniature is so exaggerated. That's why I see a lot of miniatures with like very large hands and or heads um, is because you kind of need to exaggerate to some extent. Um, you know, many elements on miniatures are kind of bigger than they would be in real life. Um, and that's just based on how to translate down to miniature. Just the rules for miniatures are different. It's just different. Yeah, the not right type of random is... Yeah, your your mind 
sees it and understands that it's not quite right and you start to try to fill in all those gaps yourself boo 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 doo doo boo doo 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 want some more of this other green where did that green go this green maybe a little touch of brown yeah like a mahogany still on my paint pot from yesterday Like her camo uh, parka is a very soft camo in the film. So I want to make sure I replicate that. Uh, and I'm not looking at any reference. I know uh, it's totally against my rules, but uh, I just don't have any reference up. And we're just gonna we're just gonna do our best today. You know, if you're not comfortable with that, then that's totally okay. Yeah, you know what? I, 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 three or four is a pretty good number for a small, very, very tiny camo coat. I don't like to get over busy with stuff. Can also cheat and bring more of the yellow up to this upper surface. Like there's a little bit of sunshine. So it's kind of cheating that, that sunshine highlight effect, but it's the camo coat. Makes it more camo y. These are really thin. I got the paints very, very thin. Yeah, maybe that yellow is just, we're, we're using it to like create like highlights, but it's the, it's the camo pattern. So we're cheating. I love cheating in art. You know why I love cheating in art, Anne? Why? Because there's no cheating in art. What was the very first measure I ever painted? I thought, that was 1988. And the answer is I don't, but that was a long time ago. Whew, I'm so old. I do have some old ones though, but I don't have the first, the first things I ever painted. I'm going to use this dark mahogany to start filling in some shadows and dark lines. And then we can let bad blends be bad blends and create more uh, uh, camo patterning. Oob. Oob -a -doo boom. That dark mahogany getting those sharp crevices and shadows. A fine mahogany. Using it just to break the 
those lines and give those lines more definition away from everything. I think it needs a little more green, but I'm going to skip down and let that dry a minute. Um, we're going to skip down and do her belt, I think. I'm just mixing up a color that I like. I don't know if I like that. Need more red. There we go. What color is her pants and boots? I believe the pants are like a desaturated sky blue. Um, oh, that sounds right, yeah. <laughs> Cosplay brain coming to the forefront <laughs> of my mind here. Yeah. They, they're like a desaturated sky blue with like a very light lemon yellow stripe mm. down the side. Lemon yellow. So I'm, I'm out here with the descriptions of colors for you. I wish Josh was here because I just want a lemon yellow sky. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll do... Boots are like a blue black yeah i thought they were dark yeah they are dark they're not they're not brown like most rebel stuff she has the fancy fancy leathers yeah. uh, do you ever use the 501 first cosplay group for reference and painting miniatures hmm hmm no i don't think so I do sometimes like if I want to look at like what they think the um, colors are for things or how this moment appears or if I want to choose which version of Vader I'm using as a reference or um, but there are other groups too there's Rebel Legion that's the same as 501st but for quote unquote the good guys um, and there are other groups as well that have I guess they're called like CRLs that break down the way they look at the costumes and those can be helpful research for sure yeah I think it, I'm not saying it's bad research it's just I typically like I, I look at film stills oh yeah the um I what I I guess what I'm trying to say is the the CRLs are full of the photo research or um, stuff from the films or from the Dressing a Galaxy mm -hmm. book. Um, so you get everything in one place. You don't have to go track it down. No, gotta track it down. Yeah. And you get like front and back and any shots from behind the scenes that show parts of the costume that you might not see. So I'm using a little gray mixed with our sky blue that we made up for our shadow. All right. I don't think we have a black. But we have this dark mahogany, but I don't know if that, that, that feels too rich for Leia's hair. Needs something to kind of take a bit of that. It's kind of chestnutty in Return of the yeah, Jedi. Yeah, it's real chestnutty. 
and I need some because I have a mahogany on the on the so I need something to kind of tone it down. You know what? I'm just, I will Google this. Hold please. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Play the hold music. I will say that one of my favorite things about working here is that with a completely serious and work-focused intent, we just said, you know, I think Leia's hair is more chestnutty in Return of the Jedi. Like, without yeah. any... <laughs> yeah. Uh, Welcome. That's the job. I Anne. know, bud. It's great. Ten out of ten. That's Recommend. The, that's just the job. It's great work if you can get it. I think one of my one of my first days here, we were uh, doing a review of the Ichiwama. Maybe, but in any case, I was looking at I was looking at Ewoks and having very deep opinions about Ewoks, <laughs> and I was like, "Wow, this is it." Mama, Mama said my Ewok opinions would never matter. Literally, though, I called my mom that night and I was like, "You said that my obsession would never amount to anything." <laughs> no, she didn't say that but I think we're all surprised and grateful. Did you ever consider the Rebel Helmet instead of Leia Hairstyle? Uh, you get both in the pack. Did they know that? It's new to me. You get a helmet version and a non-helmet version in the box. This is why you gotta come to stream, everybody. Sometimes we, we learn new things. That's exciting. There you go. That's your one teaser for me. To be fair, this is the time for the teasers as far as like different ways to assemble or options you have. So. Oh yeah, I love telling people what 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 pieces they get in their miniature kits. As long as I can remember what made it. Oh, I just want to turn her upside down, but I'm on this gimbal for everybody to see. Leia has those very large eyes. Yeah, you definitely get both. You get two head options for Leia. You get the helmet, you get the non-helmet. Um, you get to pick which one you like. Uh, 
Um, I do like the helmet one. Um, but when building today, um, I thought I thought showing off the non-helmet one would be fun. Mix a little bit of that red with the base flesh tone to paint the lip. Only paint the bottom lip. If you paint the top lip, they kind of look like clowns. A, a stormtrooper helmet drum set. You can build one. There's plenty of stormtrooper helmets. Uh, you said the the boots are dark, almost black. Yeah, they are black. They are black. There's a there's a black They're super in super shiny black. She polished them. You think Brea raised a fool who wouldn't polish her own boots? Yeah. Gotta make sure you're looking fresh. So fresh and so clean, clean. Look, just because she's a rebel doesn't make her a scrub. She's a real diamonds on the soles of her shoes kind of gal. Yeah. <laughs> Kids, you got 15 minutes. You better start asking those questions. After this, I think it's time to skid out of home before it gets cold and the ice starts to freeze on the roads. Yeah, this will this will be my first time dealing with the snow in Seattle. I'm very curious. We don't get it. We don't yeah. get snow. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, any other assembly options in the box? Uh, no. Nope, the Ewoks are Ewoks. Not really a lot of options there. So, they just kind of are what they are. And then Leia has two head options. Just gonna use the same blackish gray for a little sporting blaster. Oh, I got on the thumb. I'll have to fix that later. Yeah, I mean, the Ewoks are, are kind of, they kind of are what they are. You know, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I don't think Wicked got as many wardrobe cha changes as Leia. You know, and putting in options are, are uh, you know, something we take a lot of uh, thought into. And so, you know, when, when we can, we will. But we're not going to do it just to do it. Um, 
you know, a lot of times a pose, like if you try to make two pose options, you end up with two weaker poses instead of one strong pose. Um, so we always try to start with one strong pose and then kind of think about, okay, well, what can we do to, to add a second pose to that, right? We don't try to reverse engineer. I need that paint to be a little better. Oh, I just get nervous doing this on streams. Everybody's watching. I never tire of watching you just whip up eyes so fast. Zap! Yeah. Different poses for the Ewok squads would have been cool, though. The repetition looks a bit out of place than it did with droids because droids being droids. Uh, I guess that's a I guess that's an argument you can make. Um, I mean, so that would mean, you know, a higher cost box because then you're effectively making six measures and that's a whole other frame so i don't and i don't i don't know if that's really worth the lemon squeeze and it's hard plastic they're very easy to convert they're very easy to make different with paint jobs or just some very minor posing or changing the basing like placement too. On placement, too. changing the placement. Yeah, I mean that is that is guys one of the cool things about, I guess getting to, you know, ask Dallas for insight is like learning. Um, you know, decision making often has several trees. There's there's pretty much nothing we do that we just do to do. You know, there's usually some kind of over under. There's always a reason. There's, yeah. I mean, there's always reason. There's, you know, levels and layers and you know discussions and everything taken in. And you know, it's just like engineering. Whenever, you, whenever somebody goes, oh, well, why is this head in four pieces or something? Right? It's like if you build the head. Like you can't tell by looking at just the parts on the frame. Sometimes you got to build the head and then look at the whole thing together. And then that's why it was cut apart. Right. And then like, why was it like every single frame in a box cost, right? Like, uh, there's there's some amazing videos out there about how hard plastic injection is done and how it works. So you know you just, the information is definitely there to like learn about that and why these decisions get made, right? And so every every sculpt adds cost. Right, every individual sculpt adds cost, and then you know, characters cost more than units, and then, but frames the more frames, the more 
the more cost it's you know there's you, you can learn about it it's all there I don't think their feet are real integrated into, like I'm trying to remember how they go together. It's been a little bit since I built them. Um, but I don't think their feet are super integrated into. The tree parts. You know, and like, you know, it is a hobby miniatures game and you know, it, it's an opportunity for you to express yourself through the hobby as well. This is really close. I don't think, I, I think she's just going to need some final touch-ups later on. But uh, really close, let's glaze. A little warm brown over that belt. It's a little muted. I like the hair a little bit. <gasps> you got three minutes. You better ask your questions. You better ask your questions. Or you're gonna run out of time. Highlight in the hair. Secret to eyes is when you go to paint them, take a big deep breath, practice the brush stroke with no paint on it above the eye. Don't touch the miniature, just above it. Just practice the brush stroke four, five, six times until you feel comfortable with the movement and the muscle memory kicks in. Then add the paint, take another big deep breath, and then right when you go in to paint the eye, start above it, work your way down, exhale, paint the eye. I don't know how Padme would really be able to find the outfit they sculpted her in, because Padme can fight in anything. Also. There's Go ahead, a lot Anne. of sorry, I was like Do it, I was like, <laughs> am Do I it, invited Anne. to this party? So in the lore, the deep lore, they actually use uh synth weave fabrics that the handmaidens do when constructing her um outfits, her her uh regal attire to allow for black blaster reflection, um, trap doors so the dress can stand up and be cover and then she can 
dive behind it. Um, but yeah, she's out there doing stuff any way she's gotta. Uh, literal badass. Yeah. Also, Des- I believe... And those costumes are designed for that. I believe that she is the best shot in all of Star Wars. Well, that's just... Yeah, yes. Yes, 100%. Yeah. She never misses. And the handmaids are trained assassins. Yep. They go to... They're, they're all selected for various talents. It's kind of like Ocean's Eleven in its own way when they put together the... Uh, Handmaidens. Uh, in the uh, in the, for for whichever queen is elected into office, they have to go out there and find these young women who are not only lookalikes but have skill for all the all the you know fashion stuff and the creation of the outfits, but also technology and subterfuge and. Um, badassery. So yeah, she was only ever in one scene with that outfit. Yeah, and 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 Shatterpoint. That's the one she's using. Shatterpoint. Uh, what I'm hearing is Deza and Rob wants more Padme. And you know what? Me too. You know too. how many Padmes we can make with different outfits? I think it's at least eleven per film. Eleven per film. Thirty. No, it start, It starts getting to be eleven and twelve per film between the second and third of the prequels. I'm right? in. I'm. I'm hey, in. You know I'm in. Shit, the people have spoke. More Padme's. But yeah, if you're look if you're looking for that lore, the 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 books are where you can find it, and they're great. The Padme books are really fun. She's Padme on a dog. She can wear what she wants. I also I really love the the audio versions because they're uh, narrated by Cat Tabor who played Padme in the Clone Wars, so like it really just feels like an extension of media we already have and love. That's okay if you have an issue with it. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, and that's fair. And that's fair and okay. Like that's the one we chose. Um, because we thought it was cool and interesting to show, like, you know, m- maybe the maybe the squad wasn't, you know, they were on a mission of like negotiations and something, or maybe she purposely dressed like that to throw off the opposing opposing team as she turns off the doodads and widgets. It works in action because the the costume is designed to work in action. All of, all of her costumes are designed to work in action. And I think on that, rule of cool applies. Rule of cool always applies, 100%. There's always the rule of cool, and it's the number one rule um, that we live by. I'm done painting, I think. We did pretty good. We did. Let me put this camera on your face. It's 2.03, and we did pretty good. I think maybe another... Another 20 minutes and we're finding a bunch of stuff. Like I need to turn her upside down to get like some of the fiddly details that I couldn't quite do because we'll of the do gimmick. that off screen. Yeah, we do that off screen. We do that off screen. <laughs> so another 30 minutes. So that's not bad. I'm pretty good for an hour and a half for Princess Leia. I think it's a wonderful spot to be in um, for uh, for these SharePoint measures. So anyways, thanks for joining us. Remember every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, you can check us out right here on Twitch for Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. You just watched it. Uh, you should show it to your dog because we love your dogs and your cats, both. And then for all the latest news information and announcements coming from Atomic Mass Games, including the Oops All, Adme, uh, all Padme Amidala awesome clothes pack. That's not real. I'm just making it up. Everybody wishes. Uh, you can check out all the news, information, announcements coming from Atomic Mass Games at Twitter and our, our Instagram. So check us out there. So until next week, we'll see you later. And go be heroes. Because that's what we're going to do today. Hey, hey.